I'm yes. Good evening, everyone. At this time, I'll call to order the regularly scheduled committee meeting for the Village of Lothian, Wednesday, January 4th, 2023, at 7 p.m. Roll call, please, Clerk Bob. Trustee Caveney. Here. Trustee Crowley. Here. Trustee Hilly. Here. Trustee Burbett. Here. Trustee Johnson. Here. Trustee Killily. Here. Mayor LaRue. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you, sir. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I'll open the floor to public comment. Is there any public comment tonight? Fred. Jean is giving up her first spot to you. I know. No, you go ahead, hon. No fighting. Okay. Uh, just, my question is the situation I brought up about two trucks in the guy's yard. I don't know if I was supposed to mention the address or the street, but anyway, looks like a junk shop. That's on uh, Turner. I want the address. I give you the address. Give yep, the chief. Is that a new one or one the old one? It's the same one, yeah. I'm just wondering if anybody paid inquiry. Uh, that one's been cited. Uh, well, so they've been put on notice right by the problem. Okay, well, I'll, I want to get into the uh, fact that if the man's running a business, has anybody inquired about that? Is it a business he's running out of his uh, home with two trucks and a trailer? Uh, seems like it is to me, because he has people come over <coughs> out of their car and get in their truck and go. So has anybody made contact with the uh, citizen? We wouldn't typically, he, he doesn't have a business license with the Village of Lothian, so we wouldn't typically, unless we the police caught him working on cars or something, I mean, I don't know what else you want me to, us to do. Well, yeah. He can have his, if his vehicles are legal and, and registered and they're parked properly. But I mean, how would you, in other words, you can't find out whether he's running a business out of there or not? I mean, it has to be apparent that he is. I would think. Apparently it's not apparent, or our police officers <laughs> would have. I guess I'm the only one that notices it. So what we're saying is when you say he's running a business out of his home, what you seeing that he's doing other than having? Because I believe the one where he said he had landscaping trucks. I don't know what he does. I really don't. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. So it'd be what would be apparent is if somebody was doing an auto repair shop, which we had that complaint here in town before, and we could see the numerous cars being dropped off. The guy working no. in his garage working on cars. So when we've gone over there, we saw um, violations on a vehicle which were addressed. But there's no indication to us that there is a business being ran out of the home. There, there would be supplies. There would be, um, if it's a landscaping company, there'd be signs of but if landscaping. If it's a landscaping company and he's going to do landscaping somewhere else, that's not running a business out of your home. Correct. Oh, it's not? No, no. It's not that considered? Unless they're bringing and his lawn to him out of, at his house and he's doing it there. It's not artificial like turf, maybe. <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't know. Well, and the village does allow home businesses, so you're allowed to have a business out of your home in the village. We, we are? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, Mr. Fool is standing here. I mean, I just, <laughs> nobody said that to me before. Uh, well, pr provided that it is me, a, provided it's in compliance yes. with the zoning code. So. Yes. Okay. And since we don't know what kind of business he's running, it makes it very difficult for me to go into court to tell a judge that he's running a business in violation of our code when I don't know what the business is. If, if it's a business. If it's a business. He could just be parking his truck there. Typically, when we have clear-cut violations, there's a complaint from the neighbor who can testify that they saw you know, people coming in, exchange of money, or even some people run illegal businesses out of their house and put with the Secretary of State that that's their office address. When they do that, then we can get them. But when there's no evidence other than a couple of trucks, which is a violation of itself, uh, there's really nothing for us to, to take to court. Well, I appreciate it. I'm getting educated. Glad he came. 
So are we. <laughs> as far as people parking in front of their home, is there any way that, even though they have the pavement there, and I understand it might have been there five years or ten years, that they have to comply on with the car on the street and leave that? You follow me? Or not? No. I guess nobody does. No. All right. The answer to that would be no. Right. If they're parking in the grass, yes, then the police department well, will address it. Well, if they've uh, removed the grass and they have the, the asphalt there, or in this case, the one house I'm speaking of, has a cement, it's a nice curved cement. I, I kind of like the job. But is that allowable for him to use that or? Yeah, we, we talked about that last week. We don't allow that to, to go on now, but if it had happened in the past, we're not going to make them tear it up and put it uh, back No, grass. no, I'm not asking to be tore up. Yeah. What I'm asking is, why can't he comply and park on the street like everybody else and just make it look nice? The police violation would be parked on an unimproved parkway, meaning grass. So if he improved his parkway, it wouldn't be a violation for him to park there. Now, from building code purposes, like he said, unless they're grandfathered in or prior to the date that they made it where you cannot improve your parkway, that's what we'd have to figure out. But. The violation in terms of police parking would be um, parked on an unapproved parkway meeting your lawn. Okay. Um, you probably won't see me the rest of the year. Good luck to you all. <laughs> I'm, at a, I'm at a loss. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Sure. Jean? <clears throat> First of all, I wasn't here last week, so I wanted to wish you guys all a happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year, Jean. And thank you. And, um, we're not meeting, the beautification committee, we're not meeting this month. We usually take a month off, but we'll probably start meeting in February again. Um, and next week, I'm going to acknowledge some very generous businesses in the village and landlords, so leasing companies. So um, I'll have that, uh, this compiled, I'm not going to say the amounts that they donated, just their names. And that's it. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, Happy Jean. Years. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay. Then I will close the floor to public comment and move on to trustee business, Trustee Crowley. Me first? Yeah. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> that's confusing. Um, I just had a, a couple things tonight. Um, one was um, to the village attorney. Um, Nick, do you know if there's been any change in um, the law regarding solicitors and what the village, uh, what villages have to allow and, and things like that? I know we revised our ordinance a number of years ago, <coughs> and probably like four or five years ago, where we, you know, where we gave people you no know, soliciting tags and things like that. But it seems that we're that the the amount of solicitors that we have coming to the village and applying for a permit and wanting to go door to door is increasing, and um, some of the things that we have in our ordinance, um, like doing background checks and things like that for the police department, um, we may not be able to do those things um, for solicitors going forward. So. Could you take a look at that and I, see what I we can, need I can take to a look do? at that. Because I'd like to revise it and make sure that we are being as My recollection as is that our ordinances, when you proposed it yeah. and I did it, was that we yeah. were, at the time that we drafted it, was in compliance with all uh, constitutional provisions. Right. Typically, where there is a disagreement or liability, a case against a municipality, is when you have uh, Jehovah's Witnesses or religious people going door to door and uh, that has been ruled to be protected speech for which they do not need a permit, or political people who are going to. Well, door. those would not be that. Yeah, we would not be. That would not be part of our permitting process. So um, you believe that there might be an issue with the vetting process to give a permit? Right, and okay. well, so what we'd like to do is we, you know, I don't know what the restrictions are now as far as a home improvement company from another state coming in and. Walking door to door and things like that. I don't know if that's changed. Um, if I, I couldn't find all the information, there's like three or four different statutes that we have to look at to get all the information. So if you could just kind of give us an update on that um, to see if we could make it more restrictive for things like that. Okay, I'll, I will look into the means of doing that legally. 
Um, and then the only other update I had tonight, sir, was um, mm -hmm. we talk about audit. Um, yeah, uh, one other thing that that we wanted to that I wanted to bring forward is that <clears throat> we did uh, re we did restart our quarterly in-house village safety committee meetings where we will be meeting with insurance council, I mean our insurance agent, and he will be coming in and giving the village safety tips to lower our risk management and our workers' comp liability. So we'll begin that at the end of January and it'll be quarterly. Um, and last but not least, um, Trustee Killily and I um, spoke to uh, Director Redmond and we would like the board to consider, we'll get, we're going to get some information, but we'd like the board to consider uh, a amendment to allow um, Lauterbach and Amon to do our 2022 audit um, and add just a one year extension. We feel at this point they're already finishing the 2021 um, and then we would, we're going to create a policy that we have to um, go out to bid every three years so we would constantly be re-upping that and not just doing year to year. Has Lauterbach and Amon given assurances that they will get our audit completed in a timely basis? There's no assurance to anything these days, <laughs> Trustee. I would love that those assurances. That will be assurances. a demand, yes. yes. That will be one of our requests, but. I mean, because my understanding was they're the ones who told the village of Midlothian when they were done with this audit, they didn't want to do anymore because they were too no. busy and we were too small of a fish. No, no. they never it told was us a, that. It was a big feeling that we had. That's how we felt. But that's not what happened. Yeah, no, okay. they, then I misunderstood they wanted us then. to do I thought that they, no. it was our fault. They wanted us to do a um, three year agreement. Oh, okay. And we could only commit at that time to a one year mm -hmm. because we wanted the audits to be started earlier than they were able to. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know that may they may not bid when we do our new um, mm -hmm. when we do an RFQ. Mm -hmm. They may not bid on it. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, um, and you know we haven't asked them yet, but we wanted the board's blessing before we started negotiating with them for a one-year mm -hmm. extension. If you're happy with their performance and you're well, okay with their timing, then the big the big go thing is here. Uh, Director uh, Redmond did an excellent job because she. Uh, reached out to some other towns. Mm -hmm. Everybody's having the same problem. Right. Everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not just L and A, Lauterbach and Amon and Lauterbach or whatever they are. Yep. Um, right. But did every other town get a nasty gram from the state like we did? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. The, the, okay. The there's a shortage of personnel to do audits. Okay. Every other audit firm that these other towns are dealing with had the same troubles. Okay. They went out to uh, for a letter RFP, didn't mm -hmm. get any replies. Okay. Um, it's not it's not just them. Okay. And um, you know, just my opinion but Lauterbach and Amon is I think is very detail oriented mm -hmm. and uh, just from their management letter I think they were paying attention to what we are and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. it, they didn't try to push it through. They were very um, consistent and uh, very conscientious as far as what they were doing. Mm -hmm. The problem is here that I read this in the Tribune and this is, you know, uh, baby boomers are retiring. And there is right now, for yes, every are. person who's working in the, in the workforce, there is 1.7 job, 1.7 job openings for every person that's working in the workforce. And because the baby boomers are retiring, um, when they're supposed to, 65, so on and so forth, there's going to be an increasing shortage of um, personnel to do work. And so um, I don't know if we have an RFQ for a robot, but um, <laughs> to do the to do the audit. But <laughs> but uh, it's going it's it's a problem all over. So. Um, because the audit here would be much more seamless mm -hmm. than trying to get another firm, which we've done before. Right. When Lauterbach came in, it was a mess. And, um, and, we're and also it would be quicker. It just would be quicker for them to get the, t the 22 audit done. We're also doing a lot of our journaling outside of Lauterbach now, which will hopefully <coughs> require them to do less groundwork to mm -hmm. get the, you know, all of the journaling for our year end, and that will be done. Mm -hmm. um, which will save us money on that end with mm -hmm. Lauterbach and Amon yeah. and time. Like I said, if you if you are both happy with their performance and well, I think I think the other thing is right now, like I'm to, fine to do it. an RF, RFP or an RFQ mm -hmm. uh, RFP yeah. now, um, we would be 
pushing back our 2022 audit another mm -hmm. three or four months yes. at least, yeah. where mm -hmm. if we could get it started, mm -hmm. you know, I think it just yeah. is a better process and give us some time to be able to come up with a plan and a policy <coughs> going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of I can even, I'm sure all the other uh, companies as well, they have fairly specific time frames that they work on certain towns and mm -hmm. they need to require information in a pretty specific time frame right. and we're pretty confident with Casperic um, doing the groundwork that we're going to have this stuff ready for them. So, okay. but yes, to answer your question, the, that will be demand that mm -hmm. we, we want our money's worth too. Okay. Anything else tonight? That's all I have to say, sir. Thank you. Oh, and thank you for asking that question about uh, possibly getting a, a, a discount on our insurance for having the HR consultant. Uh, yeah, I, I want to talk to Yvonne because I wasn't sure if she, if we asked the right question. So right. I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to give her a call tomorrow and just kind of follow up on that because they they did it. They paid for the policy for the police the policy software for the police department. So I was kind of hoping that you know I thought she, I I'm going to give her a call tomorrow. Yeah. I appreciate you thinking. That we can, appreciate that you we thinking can, of that. That's. Yeah. I mean, if you know, that's that's a significant amount. So. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Trustee Kelly. Uh, nothing else, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Trustee Kavey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first thing on my agenda is I would like to make the motion to deny special use application for the auto auto outlet group that operates the car lot at the corner of 147th and Pulaski. I'll make the motion. Any discussion? Welcome. Trustee Cadney? Aye. Trustee Crowley? Aye. Trustee Hilly? Aye. Trustee Burbett? Aye. Trustee Johnson? Aye. <clears throat> Trustee Kelly? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, another thing I would like to officially thank everybody who participated in decorating our Rain Ready Community Garden this year. Uh, I especially would like to thank um, Kathy Faulkner and her husband David and Jean Bartecki and her husband Mike for helping me organize and get it all taken care of while I was away. And we had uh, 12 different um, groups volunteer to decorate trees and those include the St. Chris School, the VFW Auxiliary, Hickey's Funeral Home, the Girl Scouts, the Cub Scouts, uh, Bremen High School student groups, um, the Excel Functional Life Skills Program students, their child care students and their preschoolers, Flannery's, the Midlothian Event Committee, uh, Sean Berger, one of our residents, uh, School District 143, the Park District, and the Beautification Committee. So thank you very much to everybody who took care of that for us. And that's yeah. all I have. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you, everyone that helped. Trustee Haley. I have nothing this evening, sir. Thank you, sir. Trustee Burbank. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve proven IT to replace the switches in the village hall for I'll, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'll give a second. <laughs> oh. Thought you were done. He's still going. Eighteen hundred and seventy five dollars in labor and thirty two dollars and sixty four cents in parts. Uh, more, uh, second. Any discussion? Um, the only thing I would like to add and I, I think we can just do it orally is that um, if it's okay with the board we'd like this to possibly be a manual payment um, either by check or credit card um, only because when we do a lot of services from proven they ex they want half payment at least up front so as long as that's not a problem that's the only thing I want to make sure no one had a problem with anyone else roll call please clerk Mosk. trustee Burbett aye trustee Crowley aye trustee Caveney aye trustee Hilly aye trustee Johnson aye trustee <coughs> Killily aye motion carries that's all I have for this. Thank evening. you, sir. Trustee Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have two items tonight. I'd like to make the board aware that next week Jackie Harris from the Administration and Water Department will present our plan to the board to bring the village stickers back in house. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Jackie and I reviewed the plan. I believe it will be one that the residents will like. We believe the plan will reduce, if not eliminate, long lines here at the village hall and at the at the end of June to purchase the stickers and the tax. Because I know the mayor wanted. That's one of his big concerns, and we believe we have a plan. Um, the company we've used, Third Millennium, is in receipt of our letter asking to terminate our contract with the village at the end of March of this year. We believe bringing the stickers and tags back in-house will reduce our expenses to administer the program. 
Um, after the presentation, if there's any feedback that is offered by the board, we will be happy to make that. Our goal is to have the board approve, and I'm not sure if that's the right word, but approve our plan by the end of January so we can begin creating our information campaign to educate the residents of the plan as to how they will purchase their tags and their stickers um, back in house. We appreciate what Third Millennium did, but it was what was necessary because of COVID, but we believe we can administer it better. Are there any questions? Okay. And we'll put something on <coughs> board docs so you can see part of our plan. The second thing um, is something fun. Uh, next Tuesday, January 10th at 5.30, the events committee will be meeting here at the Village Chambers to discuss and decide which events we would like to present through, throughout 2023. We'd like to invite any resident interested in participating in the committee to help create and or run and or volunteer for any of the events we'll be offering throughout the year. And that's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Can we um, set up a time to talk about um, the the tweaks we have to do to the handbook. Yeah, I have a couple suggestions. Sure. Thanks. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Attorney Valdez, nothing today. Okay. Here next week. Uh, you feel okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Under my business. <clears throat> First one is we talked about it last week. The second rooftop at the Historical Society has gone kaput and it is in desperate need to be replaced. Uh, the board did approve this, um, this change out over a year ago. Uh, we're bringing it back to the board because the price went up and we needed to get the board's approval on that. So let me give you the actual numbers. Uh, we are going to go with max refrigeration and the cost will be eleven thousand eight hundred and thirty-two dollars. Uh, this is a five-ton carrier rooftop uh, unit. So, um, uh, I guess I'm looking for a motion to uh, purchase and install the new rooftop at the historical, historical society. I'll make I'll the motion. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Any other discussion? Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Killily. Aye. Trustee Hilly. Aye. Trustee Caveney. Aye. Trustee Crowley? Aye. Trustee Burbett? Aye. Trustee Johnson? Aye. Motion carries. The other thing, I'm actually not sure about you guys. I hope you had a chance to look it all over. Um, very excited to ask the board uh, for the consideration on a class eight uh, tax, property tax incentive for the um, hard corner of 145th and Pulaski. So it would be the northeast corner of <coughs> 145th and Pulaski. Long time vacant property, uh, all asphalt. Um, we have a developer that is looking to uh, design and build a brand new Buddy Bear car wash. It is a fully bricked building with, of course, lots of glass. Um, uh, they have many sites throughout the Southland area, then they're growing in leaps and bounds. I think everyone got a chance to look at the pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, bottom line is they're, it's exactly what a Class 8 is designed to do, uh, fill vacant property with new development. Uh, it's going to create over 100 construction jobs and most likely uh, a dozen or two dozen uh, full-time positions, year-round positions. Uh, they hire locally. They're a um, uh, minority-owned business, and um, I'd, I'd like your consideration on approving a Class 8 resolution uh, for this property. Any so questions? I just have a question. Did they only need that one pin? Or are they there's getting four, all four pins? Four oh, okay, because one was highlighted in blue, so I and the others weren't. So I just was making sure. Um, so does that curb cut already exist? That's on the map I'm looking at. On 145th, no. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm Pulaski. Yes, that's that. That y, curb cut exists. That's okay. That's that Y open uh, right. entrance and exit to right way. Okay. Can our class eight require that when they do the construction of this property that they install sidewalk on Pulaski and on 145th? I that told was them something that was, that was missing when the car lot was developed was there was no requirement for them to put in a sidewalk. 
I told them that was going to be a consideration uh, for their development that we will definitely ask for one down 145th. I'm not sure going north on, on Pulaski because there's nowhere, there's nothing on the other side of that Y, on the north side of that Y. Right, but eventually, because our police station is gonna be just up the street, it would be nice if we had a sidewalk there for people to walk. I realize there's no sidewalk there now, but we can put one in. Right put one in in front of the car lot later, and then um, eventually there is a residence, residential, well, the Aunt Martha's, Aunt Martha's is just north of that, <clears throat> north of Aunt Martha's is the residential property, and then there's the corner across the street from the police station, so I think it would be nice if we had a sidewalk going along. Well, we we fully expect that the county will be putting in uh, pedestrian size, uh, sidewalks on both sides of Pulaski when they redo Pulaski. That was one of our demands mm -hmm. um, on top of that crosswalk at 146. But it's, uh, we want a fully connected mm -hmm. sidewalk from beginning to the end mm -hmm. of the area. So, okay. uh, But I did tell them for sure uh, down 145th mm -hmm. to okay. connect to the sidewalk to the east. Right. Uh, Clerk Moscow had brought up uh, some, some pretty valid questions about TIF money and the um, mm -hmm. um, enterprise zone, enterprise zone mm -hmm. and the class eight, they are not asking for any TIF money. They're only asking for the class eight. Okay. Uh, I'm not opposed uh, to giving some TIF money to get that sidewalk in, mm -hmm. but yeah. the first couple of meetings I've had with these individuals, they don't think that's a big deal at all. Okay. Uh, you, I mean, th these pictures just aren't uh, artist renderings. This is what they actually install mm -hmm. uh, nicely. Uh, landscaped parking lots um, so it didn't seem to be a big mm -hmm. deal to them yeah. to throw a sidewalk in. The enterprise zone should be of really good interest to them because it's not funds that comes out of Correct. the village coffers they actually get I mean the village would give them I think a discount on their their permit fee which is yeah. not a big deal but for them they would actually get Tax waivers they would get yeah. they would get waivers on their sales tax or like later on when they file their taxes they get rebates on their sales tax for all their materials which would be a really big deal so i you hope that they, they take it that? i, I, told them. I, told I them hope pamphlet. yeah i hope they take advantage of that because my understanding mm -hmm. is they have to fill out that application and send that in before they apply for building permits with the village so right the other thing i want you to notice on the site plan that you all received it's different than this, the original site plan that I received. The original site plan I received, the entrance and exit to the car wash is further back from uh, the stoplight. It's near the rear of the property. Okay. Uh, the site plan you received, they moved it around a little bit and put it closer to the traffic light, and they told them that's a no-go. That's okay. a, the, You're dead in the water. Right. You're not gonna, that's yeah. not gonna happen. There's yeah. too, many, right. too much traffic there. Right. I mean, 145th ain't that bad. I lived over here for 30 years. Mm -hmm. but Trustee Kelly brings up a good point about the school project. School. Mm -hmm. right. How is that going to hurt? Impact. Right. What I see is when they redo Harding to do pick up and drop off from mm -hmm. Pulaski to or Pulaski to 147th or 147th right. to Pulaski, it's going to take traffic off of 145th because I always saw the parents leaving Springfield going Springfield School going down Springfield to 145th to that traffic. Line. Mm -hmm. So that's going to alleviate all that issue. Mm -hmm. Other than that, there's right. really not a lot of traffic. On. Plus, isn't there, doesn't this property back up to an alley? It does. There is. So could they, would we allow them to have a curb cut in the alley to have traffic come right at the alley, right at the corner? Not wide enough. They're looking for a three-lane entrance. Oh, okay. And, right. and originally when I saw this with the description, I thought it was the property next to, in between Kentucky Fried Chicken and the and the apartment <laughs> so I was like wait a second this yeah. isn't gonna yeah. work yeah but then when no, it's it, at the when corner. the actual yeah. address came through then it, yeah. then it made a lot more sense yeah. because that other property is mm -hmm. right behind where the school yeah. is going to be extended yeah. no this is this will be a great development they're, they're fully aware of all the MWRD requirements because they have done a number of these developments in Cook County mm -hmm. um, gonna be a lot of grass but this this back I'm sorry I'm just showing the side of the board so the back area here, this is all grass. They're thinking about retention and here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also underground storage. So. Great. Um, the only uh, easement issue was the sanitary sewer 
running from 145th going north near the rear of the property, they're mm -hmm. going to make sure that the building is nowhere near that. Mm -hmm. So that was the uh, yeah. sanitary sewer easement there. Other than that, they're all good to go. They're going to work with Rightway on their sign because Rightway's sign is on the south side of that Y entrance oh, exit so off of Would it have to get here. moved? Yeah. yeah. So they'll have to put their sign on the north side of that entrance. Uh -huh. So um, I think I was. So, so Mayor, we don't know what the plan is for the remodel of Springfield School when they're adding, and you talked about the traffic direction. We don't know what that is. Can you share that with us so that, because that's my concern. Obviously, you just said that 145th. So, so the big picture. Um, they're still in the very early stages. Uh, we're vacating 146th. Right. Um, so parents will be able to access, they're actually gonna turn the front of the school back to the original front of the school where Springfield says on the so west side. So it faces side. west. So the school right. is literally gonna face west again. Uh, parents will be able to pick up and drop off their kids. Uh, basically, uh, Harding, Harding is gonna come through the property right. and mm -hmm. curve to uh, 146th at the alley right. to let people off get out at, at Pulaski right. or vice versa, uh, 147. So there'll be no traffic obviously on 146th because that'll right. be vacated. That'll be part of the their project. Um, that part of uh, 146 will be turned into a large gym and a few more classrooms and also mm -hmm. a parking lot for the teachers. Okay. So they're working through uh, some variance issues that. We're trying to get out of the way before we have to go through the variance process. Uh, size of the parking stalls, uh, amount of landscaping that's involved in our parking lot ordinance, or to try to work through that. Right. Um, right. Th They've had the school, um, the people involved with the school, their engineering team has had many conversations with Superintendent right. Witt with regards to that. So he's who's, helping them. looking them, for answers now. Yeah, he's helping them work through all of those. Right. So that when they go to Final they, approval. It still has to go to the zoning board, right? For some variances, so that's what they're trying to work out. Mm -hmm. So, from the standpoint of uh, students walking, is there any issue there walking down? I don't know where the students would walk, but they would walk. Well, they're supposed to cross at 145th and Pulaski. That's right, where right, students are right, supposed right, to cross. Right. They right. don't, but right, we're going right. to try to force yeah. them that way. With right. the new sidewalk down Perhaps the maybe we install a 12 foot chain link fence <laughs> across where 146th Street is on the west side of Pulaski. Because well, that's good. the parent, I mean, I've seen it. Parents stand there and they look both ways and then they tell their kids to run and they're running right. across four lanes. Droves, and of, them. droves of kids. It's crazy. Right. Huh? So, what, what do you, I mean? So, I mean, you know, kids don't I'm walk to try, I'm walk. trying to picture this in my own, in my own mind, but. Is there any, there isn't any students that really walk north of 145th? They cross at 145th and go south. Well, that's what they're supposed to do. The problem is well, they no, stand I, I where 146th Street would be and they run I, across the road. I, under, I understand that, but the, the big question would be, so you're saying, Mayor, there won't be a lot of exit traffic on 145th because it's supposed to go another direction it'll all be on the west side of the school it won't be down 146th or springfield anymore it'll right. all be basically harding harding's going to come through now all the right, way to right. the alley at 146th right. so, the, so they'll all, leave. all the parent traffic will not be coming out to 145th okay they, they won't they can't it's impossible because they have to go out 147th or plus okay and this and uh, the amount of cars that will be at the intersection of 145th and Pulaski won't cause a problem for crossing uh, for the crossing guard or the, for any crossing traffic I mean I, I, I don't know what the best case scenario is or the worst case scenario is um, it's going to be a discount yeah. car wash and I uh, you know, go by uh, another car wash in Crestwood, and when it's jammed up, it's really jammed up. Well, I that's mean, why they, they're creating uh, four lanes of 
of entrance, but three three, three to get lanes. into the property, but four lanes to stack cars. I, okay. I know what you're saying. It's, uh, Delta Sonic, yes. or uh, the one over on uh, 159th and yes. Oak Park. Yeah. That yes. was always pretty bad. Yes. This is a much larger property with a much larger staging area. Um, okay. This is from this is. And the reason Crestwood's Delta Sonic is so bad lately is because the one in Tinley's is closed. 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 Right. It has been closed. Yeah. And That's all why. Of us with uh, monthly passes, you know. <laughs> yeah, everyone has to go. And, and besides, yeah. it doesn't, I, really, in my mind, it doesn't matter how large the property is. When you go from mm -hmm. having below zero weather and crappy driving <laughs> conditions to 50 degrees, right. everybody's going to want to go get their car washed. So, right. you know, one day like that, well, it's going to cause, it's going to create havoc no matter where right. you're at. That's what I'm thinking of, but if there is no basic traffic there as far mm -hmm. as vehicles, that's I live, great. I live there 30 and years and... and what, about, what about students crossing from uh, east to west or west to east on Pulaski? At 145th, because you have a crossing there, right? Well, but they don't have any reason to go on the north side of the street. They would only no. be on the south side of the street. They'll be coming from 146th. We're going to try to force them down Pulaski right. and cross either to 147th south or 145th. Crossing of 145th. Yeah. But even if they crossed over to the north side of that intersection, it, there's not there's not a crossing guard because there's no sidewalk right. uh, on Pulaski. Right. It's only you got to cross on the south crosswalk at 145th and Forest. And we already know that they're not willing to put in a stoplight there. So, right. Well, that that right. does right. bring right. up right. a good point. If if we're going to force the student tr foot traffic to leave leave the school on the west side of the building, walk along Harding to get you know to curve to get to Pulaski and walk down 104, walk to 145th. Is there a sidewalk along Pulaski there? Yes. There is a sidewalk all the way to 145th yeah. on the south side. Okay. Yes. On the east side. East side. Sorry, I meant the southeast. Yeah, on the east side of the street, south yes. of south of 145th. Right. right. Yep. There's okay. a sidewalk there. Right? And then, Mayor, you said that they would have, because they didn't put in their proposal about the number of people they were hiring, uh, it's going to be a uh, dozen to two dozen okay. full-time employees, year-round full-time employees. Okay. I mean, managers and, and again, hiring locally, uh, that's their thing. Uh, Benefits? I mean, yes. Health yes. insurance? Yes. Health insurance, paid vacation, 401k, it's yeah. all in the... Yeah. Well, they're looking for long-term employees. Yes. Thank All right. Um, with that, is the board okay with me directing Attorney Valdez to whip up a Class 8 property tax resolution to put on the agenda for next week? Yes. Any dissension? Well, here, I'll have him do that and I'll put it on there anyways and then you can just dissent <laughs> next week. They're, they're trying to purchase the property and, and they just want to make sure that they have an opportunity to get this Class 8. That's all. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't go through, then it doesn't go through. If it doesn't meet our, you know, so. You got are are yeah. we allowed to put something in the Class 8 about, uh, <coughs> or can that only go into special use? That they have to, oh, well, Class 8, they get property tax. waived. Property tax reduction. It's, it's, a, it's reduced. It's a 50% reduction of property taxes for 11 Ten, years. 11 years. But it's tempered. 10% for 10 years, I just looked right. at it. 15% yeah. okay. uh, for the 11th year, 12%, right. 12th year is 20%. 20%. Right. Okay, can we put a stipulation in there that that this can be rescinded if they fail to pay their property taxes? If for some reason? I mean, if we don't, we don't give the class eight, that's the, that's the, yeah. uh, Oh, the county does. Yeah, oh, we just we're, have we're to agree We're gonna tell the county it? it's okay to yeah. give the They need our blessing oh, to give it. Okay. Yeah. I would imagine if they don't pay their property taxes to the county that they would, uh, County well, should rescind I have no idea. It. Thank you. I don't know. Okay. Be nice if we could, it'd be nice if we could do that. <laughs> also, uh, it's a vacant property now, so there'll be taxed as a vacant property. It's being taxed as a vacant property now. So uh, it won't kick in. Well, the higher property taxes won't kick in for a couple years after construction. But uh, mm -hmm. so. All we're, all we're doing is, is saying that we, we are okay with you getting Class 8, and then it's up to them to get it. Right. Okay. 
will definitely benefit the increment in the tips. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Be a huge, yeah. huge benefit to the tip. And even still, prop. 50% property tax on improved property is still more than the property tax on a piece they, of vacant land. In. So it's still an advantage to the village. We're not losing anything. Hey, do we get any increment for the police station? <laughs> yes, you do, sir. All right. <laughs> just, just asking. All right, that's all I have tonight. Uh, Clerk Bosco. I have nothing to me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, that Should, wasn't fair. You shouldn't no. have asked. All right. <laughs> then, uh, seeing, oh. as, seeing as no further business coming for the board, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Being adjourned. Thank you all. Excellent Thank you. job. Thank you.